tuned for a natural force. There are so many JRPGs out there that go under the radar and no one ever talks about. Join me as I jump into five hidden gem JRPGs that are criminally overlooked. There are an incredible amount of JRPGs released every year, and it's impossible to play them all. Naturally, there are going to be several that get overshadowed and overlooked. Today, I'm talking about five JRPGs throughout the years that have been largely ignored and deserve to be played by any respectable JRPG gamer. It is almost a crime that these games have gone without being played, as they are all fantastic games in their own right. Be it their art style, gameplay, storytelling, each of these games offers a fantastic experience that you absolutely should not miss. Before we get started though, have you played a JRPG that gets overlooked? If so, let everyone else know in the comments below and spread the good word. And if you enjoy JRPG content, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ding that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future content. But enough of that, pull up a chair, ice your drink, and pop that corn. It's time to talk about five amazingly fantastic but overlooked JRPGs that deserve to be played. I Am Setsuna, released in 2016 for the PC, Vita, PS4, and Nintendo Switch by Tokyo RPG Factory. The first thing I thought of when I played I Am Setsuna was, dang, this game is comfortable. The moment I started playing it, I got the same sort of feeling that I got when I played JRPGs from my past. There's just something about I Am Setsuna that brings you back to the days of JRPG past, and it feels instantly nostalgic, even if you've never even touched the game before. It could be the calm violin music, or maybe the turn-based battle system pulled right out of Chrono Trigger, or possibly it's the Tales of Symphonia-esque pilgrimage-style storyline. That being said, I Am Setsuna is a hidden gem for sure. I remember it got talked about very briefly, but then it disappeared into obscurity about as fast as it arrived. When I played I Am Setsuna, I was surprised that it wasn't talked about more. Sure, it doesn't do anything mind-blowing or amazing, but at the same time, it was one of those games I couldn't put down. The characters were all incredibly wonderful, and the music was so calming. With most of the soundtrack, Violin takes the lead, and this is something that isn't seen very often in games these days. The calm, relaxing music, it gives somber undertones. Especially that world map music, it's so serene, and it doubles almost as a lullaby. It just puts you at ease and almost knocks you out because of how simple it makes you feel. I really adored I Am Zetsuna, and even better, it isn't a huge time commitment. I Am Setsuna will only set you back about 20 hours, and the only negative I can think about is the huge amount of side quests and your final character unlocks as soon as you open the door to the final battle, and you have to run all the way out of the final dungeon to do these side quests and grind up your new character. This isn't terrible, but do you ever get that feeling when you get to the end of the game and think, okay, I'm ready, I'm ready to just finish it, and then you lose motivation to do the extra side stuff? I know I do, but still, go check out I Am Setsuna if you get the chance. It is an incredibly fun game and worth the time spent with it. Infinite Undiscovery, released for the Xbox 360 in 2008. Okay, I know, I get it. Infinite Undiscovery has a lot of things that people really dislike. Different stances for exploring and attacking, random music mechanic for whatever reason, and the voice acting. Who boy, is that voice acting a piece of work? Maybe even a cup of tea? You know, to wash it down? Quiet, scum! I know English voice acting is often mocked for being terrible, and never anywhere near as great as the Japanese counterpart, but personally, I love bad voice acting. I've been known to play things solely because the voice acting is terrible. Chaos Wars, Archives Fantasia, which is a game I was considering for this list but passed on, Castlevania, Symphony of the Night, in addition to Infinite Undiscovery. I honestly really, really loved playing this game. 
part of that could be because I love tri and they honestly haven't ever let me down. And yes, that does include Star Ocean integrity and faithlessness. Feel free to roast me in the comments, but I love the heck out of that game. Anyways, back to Infinite Undiscovery. It just has that strange, low-budget, campy feel. The aforementioned bad voice acting, the very basic menu, and the combat, they all feel decent. Not bad, but barely passable, and I feel that builds into the charm of the game. Sure, it might not be the most spectacular game under the sun, and some might even call it bad, but give it a shot. I'm sure you'll adore it. Luckily, it is on the Xbox Series X backward compatibility list, which is a good thing. Now, if they could only bring Eternal Sonata to that thing. Ease Origin Initially released in 2006 for the PC and eventually ported to the PlayStation 4, PlayStation Vita, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. I know what you're thinking. Shinky, Ease is not an Overlook series. Everyone knows about it, and everyone's played it. You would be correct. The series as a whole is indeed very popular these days, and everyone loves it for sure. However, Ease Origin could also be considered the black sheet of the series. Well, alongside Ease 5, but that's a whole other story. Only because Ease Origin is the only game in the series that does not feature our fiery-headed lad, Adol Kristen, as lead. Ease Origin is, well, an origin story, taking place 700 years before the events of Ease 1, Ancient Ease Vanished, and stars three protagonists, Yuna Katova, Hugo Fact, and Toal Fact. Each character has a different combat style, a distinctive story, and you are required to play through all three of these storylines in order to get the full view of the story. Honestly, it's a shame that just so many people ignore Ease Origin because not only does it have what I consider to be the best style of Ease, shared with Ease the Oath and Felgana and Ease Ark of Nepishtim, but I feel the story of Ease Origin is probably one of the best in the series. Seeing the whole base of the story of Ease and how everything started just gives so much insight to the series, and I feel it also leads to appreciating all of the story events that much more, especially the story of Ease 1 and 2. Unfortunately, with the way that Ease Origin and Ease 1 and 2 have their story told, they do spoil one another, but still, you need to play Ease Origin. It's worth it in every aspect. Blue Dragon released for the Xbox 360 in 2006. You may have heard me mention Blue Dragon in my top 10 JRPGs for beginners video, but just because it's a good intro JRPG doesn't mean it doesn't deserve to be played. Sure, people know of Blue Dragon, but it's usually just blown off as another Torium a JRPG. Personally, I think it's a wonderful game that gets overlooked as just a weak game. I don't know if it's the art style, the fact that it's an Xbox 360 exclusive, or just the fact that you play as nothing but kids, which must mean it's just a child's game. That's sarcasm. It's great, and much more than just a baby's game. Furthermore, Blue Dragon is the only game on today's list that features a job system, quite possibly the greatest and most incredible JRPG mechanic ever conceived. Okay, enough of that. I love job systems. But why Blue Dragon? It's talked about semi-frequently, but this is another game I feel is overlooked when thinking about the best JRPGs in the seventh generation. Commonly, you hear of the bangers like Nino Kuni, Xenoblade Chronicles, Lost Odyssey, Nier, but Blue Dragon rarely ever makes these lists. Honestly, with the job system, a semi-serious story, and humor out the wazoo, Oh, and Pooh being a main gimmick of the enemies, and the environment. Yes, I have the mental humor of a five-year-old. Give me a break. Blue Dragon is just another criminally overlooked JRPG that deserves so much more credit than it gets. It's a shame, too. It's locked to the Xbox along with Lost Odyssey. Easily some of the best JRPGs of that generation. Tokyo Mirage Sessions, initially released for the Wii U in 2015, and later on with an enhanced port for the Nintendo Switch. Do you like Fire Emblem? Yeah? Shin Megami Tensei and Persona? Yeah? What about Idols? Well, if so, you'd be perfectly at home with Tokyo Mirage Sessions Sharp FE. I know, this game always gets looked as like a Persona light, and that 
could be true to a degree, but that's no reason to just look past this game. I feel this game has some of the best renditions of the turn press system, and the performance abilities are so incredibly flashy. I don't understand why this game isn't on the top of more people's lists. Its humor is amazing, the story is great, and the vocalized Fire Emblem theme is... Okay, I'll be honest, it's pretty cringe, but it's also something I can't stop watching. Don't expect an answer why, I got nothing. It's a guilty pleasure, don't judge me. As someone who loves musicals, this game spoke to me. Each chapter has a full-on J-pop song, but if you pay attention to those lyrics, they're incredibly dark. Which is kind of contradictory, considering the game just seems so happy-go-lucky and positive with how bright and colorful it is. Seriously, pick up the Switch port of this game. All DLC is included, and it's just an all-around fun time. Stop underappreciating this game. It's fantastic and deserves a sequel, or at least another game in the same style. So there you have it, five overlooked and underappreciated JRPGs. Have you played any of these games, or are there any other games you would want to add to this list? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and would like more videos like this, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ding that notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. And if you made it this far, and you haven't had enough of me yet, check this video out. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. That being said, this has been Shinky. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, have a wonderful day.